Hello again, everybody. So after one year and just a couple months, I quit my job at Walmart. Um, I'd like to share with everybody, with all of you, uh, what led me to make this decision. Um, I'll try to be respectful. This is not going to be a Walmart sucks kind of video. Uh, I'm not going to be naming anybody, but I want to discuss the things that I think that were done poorly um, since my very first day there. Um, the company culture, and what I think Walmart could do to fix all of this stuff. Because let's face it, if it was fixed, I don't think I would have left. The reason behind this video is because these thoughts are fresh in my mind, so I want to talk about them. This isn't me throwing Walmart under any kind of a bus. Um, I spent seven years in the hospitality industry, and when I got out of that industry, I never made a video on why I wanted to. And now it's been so long... I've kind of been typing up some notes on that, but it's really hard to dig those thoughts back up. So I want to do this while it's just like days old in my mind. It's fresh. Where better to start than from the very beginning? So I got hired at Walmart in early 2018. I think it was February. Uh, I was hired to work in Lawn and Garden. Um, and after a couple days of orientation, I don't think they were full days, um, with human resources, I was on my own for what was probably at least one full shift, maybe two full days of computer, uh, computer-based learning programs, the CBLs, they call them. Now, therein lies problem number one. Um, I know this is a common criticism you hear a lot about Walmart, but, um, and I've observed it myself as a customer before I even worked there. Um, but they don't train you. And I know through a business lens, this is a cost-effective move. You don't have to pay the computer. You don't have to train the computer. I mean, I guess you have to make the programs. Um, computer doesn't take vacations. The computer doesn't need health benefits. However, after droning through your third or fourth CBL, you probably don't even remember what you did first. Also, because you're literally being told and not shown. Like, in other words, an associate is not right there demonstrating important workplace policies, procedures. You're probably less likely to retain this knowledge by the time you get out to the floor. For example, like, Walmart has all those different kind of buckets, like, for, for blood or, you know, chemical spills. Like, they go in, like, a different colored bucket. Where the heck are those in the store? The CBL tells you, but, like, nobody actually goes and shows you. So, in short, actions speak louder than words, and regardless of how Walmart or any other company would try to justify this, like, oh, we save money on training so we can pay you higher wages, give you more hours, the simple truth is, you get what you pay for. Um, and this is true no matter what you're talking about. If you don't value training your associates, then those associates will not be valuable to you. You can say, oh, no, 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 of course we value it. Well, yeah, they, they'll, they'll take the time to teach you how to run a register, because that's where the money's coming in. But when it comes to anything else... I know this because I worked with asso um, some associates who had been there for, I don't know how long they were there, years, nine years, um, prior to me, and they couldn't even read a label. I wish I was joking. In fact, my very sponsor, the guy who was supposed to take me under his wing, teach me stuff, he pretty much did the exact opposite. I was a new guy, he could shrug off all his work onto me because I was learning, it was my training, but whenever I needed to stop to ask him something... Oh, figure it out, figure it out, you know, and he would just disappear, and I was there for probably a couple months before I found an associate who was willing to teach me how to read a label. No joke. And in the meantime, I had actually gone to my assistant manager and explained that I needed a new sponsor. I was like, look, I'm sure he's a nice guy outside of work, but I mean, he's not teaching me anything. And I was interrupted, and I was told, look, he's actually the best one for you to be with. Okay, I tried. Now, not long after I was sent out onto the sales floor, I, I don't know, a couple days, maybe a week, um, I was called to sit in on a meeting of the minds. You know, this was two co-managers, I think an HR associate, and um, some other people who worked there that I did not know. The meeting was about a few things. I really don't remember what it was about. But when it came towards the end, they all kind of looked at me. And the reason that I was there is because they wanted to know, hey, what are we doing that we could maybe do better. So I let him have it. And I let him have it politely. I was like, you guys kind of dropped the ball on the training. I, I don't have a clue 
what I'm supposed to be doing. In fact, the first day that I went out to my department, no lie, there was nobody out there. I went out to Lawn and Garden and there was no one out there. Then they went on and, and they kind of took what I said and they went on to, you know, talk about how it was important for those with the knowledge and the daily routines to slow down for like those who are acclimating, you know, the people who are still learning. We need to slow down and work at their pace until they can work at our pace. And yeah, that sounds great. Except I bet that never left that room because it wasn't long later. I didn't even get to really learn their faces. Both those co-managers, they moved on to do other stuff. But before they left, this is why I doubt it, there was even a day where they, they pulled me from Lawn and Garden and they sent me to electronics with no training. I was never even trained for Lawn and Garden and they send me to electronics. And I remember thinking, I barely even know Lawn and Garden. And they're like, well, you know how to run register. That's, that's all that you need. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> There's actually a lot more to electronics. And I just felt like an idiot for about two hours. So, so much for that meeting. I mean, if Walmart doesn't incorporate the feedback, if you actually don't take that feedback and do something with it, then it doesn't matter. I mean, we can talk about things all day, but unless you make those tough choices, nothing's going to change. So this leads me to the big issue I have. Uh, one best way. Walmart's one best way. So basically, one best way is Walmart's way of getting the job done. Now, normally, I don't get hung up on words, but the problem is... Who gets to say what the one best way is? And actually, now that I think about it, I, I don't think one best way was ever really communicated to me comprehensively. Anyways, and trying to enforce kind of like a one-size-fits-all to how other people get their jobs done, I think can lead to a lot of frustrations. And I kind of have some comparisons that I can make about this. Now, chances are, if you've been to different Walmarts, you've probably noticed how similar they are in, in their layout. You know, that's not a coincidence. Walmart wants as many of their stores as possible to resemble each other. Like in my store, you're in Lawn and Garden, you leave, boom, there's hardware. Well, you go to another store, look, hardware and Lawn and Garden are right next to each other. That's not a coincidence. That makes good business sense. If you go to a different Walmart, you would like to think that you know where electronics is or shoes or toys or hardware because of where they are in your local Walmart. However, when it comes to how Walmarts are run... Um, I think that should be just as important. There should be some kind of unity. This shouldn't be so much up to the store manager. It should just be like a blanket policy. Now, what I'm about to tell you could just be one manager enforcing the rules versus one manager not enforcing them. So you could technically say that what I'm about to tell you could just be that my second store manager was doing things the way that they were supposed to be done and the prior one wasn't. But I'd still be able to come right back and say, well, then... That just comes right back to bad training. Yeah, I don't think I ever learned exactly what one best way was. When I first started working in Lawn and Garden, our freight was typically brought out to us by the night truck, the unload crew. Um, they'd work it onto pallets when their back room got full. They'd bring it out. They'd usually dump it in our drive through which was usually closed by this time. It's like 8, 9 p.m. Um, sometimes an associate would hop on the forklift, go around the back of the store, grab it, bring it, dump it in the, the drive through and we'd bring it in one pallet at a time and we'd work it. This seemed easiest for me as a new hire. It just, that's how they've been doing it. This makes sense. It was pretty easy to pick it up. Now, this would go on for an entire year. And no store manager, no co-manager, no assistant, nobody ever came out and took issue with the way that we were doing things. So that's how I learned how to do my job. Now, shortly after one year, management changes. Now pallets are no longer allowed on the sales floor. They cannot be stored anywhere in the department while they're waiting to be worked or being worked. You can't put them in the back and then say, oh, I'm bringing it out a bit at a time. Nope. Freight has to be brought out um, from the receiving area, piecemeal, on L carts. And that takes a lot longer. And you're not allowed to work freight or projects after 5 p.m. This is usually where they repurpose you to go somewhere else. Go straight in stationery, go straight in toys, go to electronics, uh, wherever. Again, I would just like to point out that no store co or assistant manager had ever taken issue with the way things were for the first year nor did they come to our department and say no projects are afraid after five so i can't say if this was a neglect for the rules or just a sudden enforcement of them or that the one best way thing is actually more malleable than it sounds and the store manager can just make that whatever they want willy-nilly and then it's my way or the highway let me just tell you quickly how asinine 
it is for a store manager to dictate how a job should be done versus the people doing it. Now that I think about it, this probably was due to the store manager because I was never taught in orientation or through a CBL that no work was allowed after five and that you just zoned. Again, what a way to spend your first year only to have to deal with the frustrations of having to unlearn almost all of it. Right around this time, Walmart changed its attendance policy. Now, I'm mentioning this because this will come all full circle. Uh, this is another selective area of enforcement for my store. In its changes, Walmart introduced protected paid time off, PPTO, which could be used at an associate's discretion when missing work in order to cover any would-be uh, absence penalties for missing work. Um, so even if you just didn't want to come in, you could just use your PPTO. Doctor's appointment, PPTO. Going to a friend's house to hang out, PPTO. They don't care what you're using it for. Snow day, doctor appointment, emergency, or you just want to stay in bed. That's what it's there for. Now, I applauded Walmart for that because ever since day one, I thought it was stupid that they held it against you if there was 28 feet of snow outside and you called out, you still got an occurrence. Your occurrences could get up to nine before you were canned. Um, with this new policy, they brought it down to five, which everybody's like, well, that's dumb. And I'm like, no, it's not because now you can just use PPTO and your occurrences stay at zero. So that was a good move that they made. Another change came in the form of perfect attendance bonuses. <sighs> I'll get into this later. Um, if you had zero occurrences throughout a quarter, uh, you he or she would get a my share payout of 125% versus the 100%. Um, but like my mom always says, that looks good on paper. I mention all of this, okay, all of these changes, because Walmart was also introducing a new policy where if you punched in when you were not scheduled, whether that was for the day or you're punching in early, it would be treated the same as you missing work. You'd accrue an occurrence, and eventually if you did it enough, you'd get fired. Um, the point was to work your schedule. Now, I mention this because Walmart doesn't create schedules. No. Just like training, they delegate that to a computer program as well. So you might be wondering, why the heck would you punch in if you're not scheduled? Simple. To get your 40-hour work week. Also around this time, myself and a bunch of other associates saw their hours just go... <laughs> um, as a full-time associate, my hours went down from about 40 to about 16. There was even a week where I had zero. Zero hours. Now, to be fair, these weeks were usually fixed before they actually came to be. So if it's two weeks out and I have two days, by the time that week came around, I would have, I don't know, 32, 34 hours. But this was another gripe of mine. Because they delegate scheduling to a computer program, it makes a mess of things, and then a manager has to go in and fix it. Eventually, I saw my hours even fall below the 30-hour mark, and my boss just seemed less spirited about it when I asked him. He assured me that it was just out of his hands. They want you to work whatever your schedule is. They don't want to be changing it all the time. Now, I know it probably isn't fair of me to say, because I didn't talk to everybody, but I just started to feel like nobody cared. The slow part of the year had ended by this point. January's, you know, the new year. It's slow. It's after Christmas. Nobody's buying anything. But Easter was coming. The drive through just opened. And Walmart had the gall to post this thing by the time clock where it says, if you call out on a key event day, you now receive double the occurrences that you would. So basically, after cutting hours, then they turned around and say, you have to be there. All of this nonsense also makes it very hard to supplement your income with a second job. Because even though you might not be scheduled, Walmart still demands that you're available at all times. I was available throughout the day, seven days a week, with the exception that I had no desire to work past 8 p.m. And I lost all my hours. That wasn't good enough for them. Because, because of three hours? At the end of the day, they have access to my life, pretty much. But that wasn't enough. The final straw for me was actually something kind of simple. I had just finished, well, okay, I was nearing the end of a very long week. I had just punched out, I had one more day, and then I was off for four days. And I had been looking forward to this for like five days. I had requested a Friday and a Saturday, and I got it. And I had Wednesday and Thursday before that off. So I was like, oh my God, four days, I can't wait. 
So I'm doing a bit of shopping and I'm going down the water aisle and I bump into my assistant manager. He was working there uh, and he said hello. And I got to give the guy credit. He was the only manager that would ever say hi, ask you how you were doing, shake your hand. He was it. So the problem that I have here is not with him. He was just kind of the one that said it. So he asked me what days I was off that week. And I was like, <sighs> but I told him, I was like, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And he goes, you don't want all those days off, do you? And I know he didn't really mean any ill will or anything. But by that point, I was like, yeah, I kind of do want them off. And I ended up taking more than four. Um, I just didn't go back to work. I know that's not right. I probably should have called or said, you know, but I just, that's not like me. You know, I spent seven years in hotels and as frustrated as I got with that industry, I could name managers that, you know, could vouch for my attendance. I don't call out. Like, that's how I know it's not me. Something was wrong. Because this, also, this manager here, he knows Every time he asked me how I was doing, I'm like, I'm always good. I'm always fine. And he's like, that's good. That's a good way to be. I was never in a bad mood at work. And it, and it's like, you don't even see that change where, where you're like, eh. you know, you just go in and you're, you're in a bad mood. You almost don't even realize it. So what can Walmart do to fix all this stuff? I have a list of solutions here. Um, they'll probably cost money, which is why they would never do these. But I got the solutions right here and everybody's sitting around scratching their head. I got the solutions to these problems. So the number one thing that you could do differently is train your associates. Don't use computers. I remember this one day I was in Lawn and Garden and I overheard an academy member. We were at an academy store lecturing his class. I, I guess they would bring the class around and show them things um, on what insecticides or, or fertilizers and stuff are and the like. And I never said it, but I wanted to peek around the corner and go, why don't they have you do the training? Because he's explaining to these, these people what, what this stuff is. And I'm thinking, if you train your associates, they can better serve customers. And, and I can only speak from personal experience, but it feels great when a customer asks you a question and you know the answer. But just about everything I learned about lawn and garden stuff, I had to research that on my own time at home. Number two, they got to get involved with how their associates want to do their work. Don't just enforce a policy that's ignorant of people's preferences. I mean, just kind of a one example, you know, you're going to have introverted and extroverted people working there. People see their, their jobs different. And the biggest issue with one best way is that it, it, it only flows down from the top. It, it almost implies that the people at the bottom who actually do the work, they don't know how to do their jobs. And as equally tragic... Their input doesn't matter. One best way implies that good ideas can never stem from the bottom. Find a compromise. All that should matter, this is the secret, is that work is being done efficiently and safely. Work should be fun. I mean, we all have to do it. Why make it miserable? Number three, you need to create schedules by hand. And you have to be respectful of people's availability. The needs of the business cannot consistently outweigh the needs of the human beings who are working for you. Don't delegate the scheduling to a computer program because that creates more work than you think you're saving. What is the point in scheduling three weeks in advance? This is another thing I hated. When you have to have human hands go in and fix it. I remember an orientation. They're like, oh, we schedule three weeks. So you got plenty of time to plan your life around that. I thought about getting a second job at one point, and I'm like, I can't because I see I got two days off, and then in a week, I don't have them anymore. They changed it because the computer screwed it up. And another thing, I thought this was funny. Um, a lot of the people in my department kind of had like set days off every week. Same people, somebody, uh, Sunday, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, some people had. Some guys had Friday, Saturday. And But there was two people who always had Wednesday off. And the computer would consistently give me that day off and they would have to change it. I'm like, why? You have nobody here in the morning. But it would constantly do that and they constantly had to fix it. Number four, you have to create parallel policies. You want Walmarts to look the same? Fine. Then make sure they run the same. Don't allow a swapping of store managers to completely change how things are done. 
you have to protect your associates. I think having my first year at Walmart more or less erased by just a change in management, that was why I left. He didn't say hi to me. No, I, we didn't know each other. But yet he came in and dictated how I had to do my job and he's not even back there. Number five, make work a place that people want to be. We have a 12 foot rule in place to ensure that customers feel welcome. Okay, we'll try to make your associates feel welcome. My co-managers never once said hi to me. Okay, and I believe my store manager, the new one, only ever said hello when he first got there. The only assistant manager who ever said hi to me was the one I mentioned before. The other ones, not unless they were telling you to do something and they didn't, they didn't say hi then. I can't tell you how many times management walked right past me. I was only ever spoken to when I was told what to do. So why make this video? Well, I mean, my time with Walmart's over, uh, but I had to get this out of my system. It was frustrating enough that I needed to share this with other people who've maybe had uh, similar experiences as I. But I hope that my feedback in one shape or form, I mean, I doubt anybody from Walmart's ever going to see this, but I feel like they should use this feedback to fix something. You know, Walmart's come a long way from what it used to be, um, but there's still a lot of work to do. And some of you might be wondering, why didn't you say anything while you were there? I did. During that meeting, just mere days after I went out onto the sales floor, and I hope if Walmart learned anything from that, they learned that uh, maybe next time you ask a new hire what you can do better, they actually listen. So anyways, that's not everything that I wanted to say. Uh, I don't have time for that. Um, I'd be talking for 20 hours. But, um, you know, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Uh, do you work at Walmart? Did you work at Walmart? What were your experiences? Um, you know, I tried to be respectful. But, uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.